Hello, and welcome back to Just Say It. I'm Dee James, broadcasting live from the beautiful Peace Garden State of North Dakota. And as you join the program, I invite you to comment below. Let us know you're here and where you're watching from. And my guest today on Just Say It, and by the way, Just Say It is broadcast, is simulcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and replays are heard on SoundCloud. And my guest today is a man who is a preacher in the patch, oil patch, that is. Hey, Ron, welcome. Wow, Ron Evett is my guest, and what are what is going on there, Ron? Well, I have to tell you what happened to me. I just, oh, no, there it is. I got it all lined up. I just got out of jail, okay? And uh, this is the first time in... Um, and I got to take this off. I'm just wanted to be funny, you know, but uh, I can't stand that thing. You but, just got out of jail. Yes. I go to jail and I have for 31 years, but uh, I, uh, they kicked me out of jail because of COVID-19, you know? And uh, so I, I don't even know what to do with myself on Sunday mornings after, um, you know, all those, these, what, three, four months now, or let's see, so February, February, March, April, May, June. About five months I've been out of jail, and I, I don't even know what to do with myself. I just was a, a ship without a sail, you know, and a ship without a rudder these, these Sundays. Yeah. So, so, Ron, so, yeah, so I went up there, and they said, you got to wear the mask, you know, and you got to yeah. have uh, your, your gloves on. And so I preached looking like that, and I thought, hey, I'm a surgeon of the soul. Yes, sir. Yeah. You've been doing your jail ministry in Williston, North Dakota at the uh, Williams County Jail. Yep. For how right. long? 31 years going. Th September will be 32. It's been a wow. fun ride. Wow, what a ride. That, what a ride. That is quite a testimony, Ron, too. There's something to be said about the faithfulness in doing that for 31 years. It was so fun. It's been so fun. It's been quite a ride, but it's gone by quick, really. Were you glad to get back to the jail today? Oh, goodness, was I ever. I've never had so many uh, prayer warriors in my life. Uh, I got up there, and those those uh, uh, guys, I went to the first, uh, this first big cell there, and they said, he showed me Bible verses and, and verses. He had them all written down. He says, I have been praying and searching the word on how to bring you back to jail. <laughs> That's what he said. I thought that. That was great. They wanted you back. They wanted me back. They really That's, did. Yeah. Well, that and that felt, I, I'm sure that that felt very rewarding and very oh, reassuring. It was. Didn't, and, didn't that bless your heart? Oh, it did. And I got into the girls' cell. See, I leave the girls for last. Leaves the best for last. They're the hardest to preach to, but uh, they're a lively bunch, you know. There's like 20 girls in there. I, well, maybe not. Well, there's a pile, 15. And uh, their tears in their eyes and so happy, you know. So it was really a blessing to get back with them again. It really was. Ron Evett, you are known as a preacher in the patch. Yeah. Uh, you've been airing your radio program 20 plus years. Oh, yeah. Since 1997, your weekly yeah. radio program has been heard, been broadcast in Western North Dakota, Eastern Montana, Wyoming, even California, and probably up into Canada as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Idaho. There's one out in Idaho somewhere. <laughs> this old boy, I have a blessed friend. His name is Fritz. And he called me up one time and he said, Ron, I want to put you on my 11 stations and uh, and I want you to give me a donation for it. And it was so reasonable. I said, you got it. And we've been friends now for I don't know how many years we've been uh, working together. He, he climbed up on top of this mountain uh, uh, between Fresno and Bakersfield and planted a translator up there on top of those mountains. So it, it airs between uh, Fresno and uh, Bakersfield, uh, California. Yeah. I didn't know that you were in California. I, I mean, I knew you were here in Western North Dakota and Eastern Montana, but I had no idea you were in, in California. That's wonderful. Uh, this Fritz, he never told me I was on radio up there, you know, and uh, 
he said, uh, he called me up one day and says, hey, are you getting a, uh, you hear anything from California? <laughs> you never, you never told me he put me on out there. And I said, yeah, I'm getting letters from inmates in Corcoran prison. Out in California. You are, you're getting letters? Yeah, I was, uh, I had, and then uh, I hadn't for a while, but I, yeah, I got letters from Corcoran prison in California. And uh, they had heard me on that radio station. So anyway, wow. he had a little well, problems with it for a while. And I, I think he just now got it back up again. So one of the reasons, Ron, that I love your radio mm -hmm. program is mm -hmm. you tell story. You're welcome. You tell stories. And, and mm -hmm. that's one of the uh, goals that I have for this program is, mm -hmm. is for folks to share their story and inspire yeah. others. But tell me about those stories that, that uh, you feature on your, your program. Well, you know what? One story I just heard that usually I come up with stories, but my brother Randy just come up with a, a nice story for me. And I'm not saying this to, I didn't even tell this on radio, but you, since you're asking, he just told me, he just left here, uh, Will, Williston, he came up for Father's Day, and he was telling me about this story, how him and I went swimming on a hot day in uh, 1971 or 72, somewhere in there, hotter than pistol, uh, boiled legs on the hood of the car, you know, and we <laughs> went swimming, and, and back in them days, uh, in the olden days, uh, they uh, used to throw a lot of chlorine in the swimming pools, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, no big deal. Chuck it in there. Well, they must have put in quite a bit. And Randy and I, we swam like a couple of fish for a long time. And so we swam, swam, swam. And we got out. And that kid, he couldn't see. He couldn't see. And so he said, I can't see. And I says, well, I'll, I'll show you the way home, you know. <laughs> and so I rigged up this, put a hat on him and put the, uh, you know, uh, uh, a towel over the hood of the bill of the, uh, uh, baseball cap, you know, so he had like this, so the sun wouldn't be hitting him straight on. And then uh, I said, just hold my hand and I'll lead you home. <laughs> yeah. And he said, that was really cool. Cause we, you know, we're like brothers. We fought once in a while, but he said, I let him hold me. But you know, that's the way it is with Jesus. Just take his hand and he'll lead you home. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun. Yes. Yes, that you know, you've been preaching the gospel not only on your radio program, the good news yeah. on your radio program, Ron, but yeah. also to, as we just talked about a few minutes ago, your yeah. jail ministry. Yeah. And then also, you have to the cross ministries that has citywide evangelical events like the old time crusades, yeah. right? You still yeah. doing that? Oh, yeah, we did 80 of them. Uh, we, we got kicked out of the arena from this COVID thing, you know, now, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, we sure plan to go somewhere this fall. D Daisy is right over here nearby. And my son, RW, we just, we're in a tent meeting and right below the devil's tower. And, uh, we're invited to a rancher's camp in South Dakota at, uh, up by uh, South of Lemon out at a rancher's camp. And so, yeah, yeah, we're, we're staying on the trail, but we want to get a, um, another crusade or two this fall. We sure do. Yeah. Well, those crusades are a way to introduce people to, um, <laughs> to whatever you are, you know, you're, you want to introduce people to the good news and you want to yeah. introduce people to, to the Lord. And so yeah. I was just wondering, Ron, if you could tell us your spiritual journey, how were you brought to yeah. faith? How did you start your, your walk? Uh, sure. your spiritual journey. Sure. Thank you. Well, when I was a little boy, my dad drugged me is what happened. He was uh, quite a guy, but he drugged me, you know, drugged me to church Sunday morning, drugged me to church Sunday night and Wednesday night. We were in that <laughs> drug to church every time the church door was open. We're drugged all the time. And uh, so it was a good heritage. And, and we grew up that way. But, you know, everybody has to find the Lord on their own. And uh, I had this gospel, why I got to love gospel meetings so much is because the preacher came to town and in uh, right about the time my brother's eye problem there in 70, 71. And uh, he, dad took us, drugged us to that gospel meeting there. And uh, it was just a good old fashioned gospel meeting. My old friend, Lowell Lundstrom, 
And uh, they preached and sang, and we loved the music, loved it. And when he gave that gospel invitation, I went down front and cried like a baby, D. <laughs> and, uh, and I looked down, and here was my little brother right next to me. He said, hi, Ron. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was a little happier, and I'm up there slobbering all over, you know. And uh, so, yeah, that was the beginning of it. But, you know, everybody, you know, you don't always stay you know, right on the trail. And I, I did, you know, you know, I didn't rob any banks or anything, but, uh, you know, sure beat up my brothers quite a bit and my brother, Andy. And, uh, but it was really when they got to the university of Wyoming that, uh, I seen how the other side lived, you know, I never drank or anything, but I went to all the bars in Laramie, Wyoming, every one of them. Um, and they really blew me away how you were trying to, they were trying to, uh, get rid of me. It seemed you would think they would want to try to lure you into their bar, but they were seemingly trying to keep me away because it said right on the bar, happy hour, seven to eight. I'm like, one hour? Seriously? One hour is all you get? Happy hour? One hour is all you get? But, you know, being an oil field hand, we went right on in anyway and played pool and Sure enough, the bars all over the city had happy hours, seven to eight, only one hour. And I, I looked at it and watched it, and sure enough, it was about only happy for one hour, just about. And I thought, well, I want to be happy in the morning. I want to be happy, you know, during the week, and, and, and uh, I'm going to stay with Jesus. In fact, one sign that really blew me away more than any of the signs ever that I'd seen or commercials, whatever it was, it was a... Uh, I think the beer industry is quite honest, actually, because they said on the sign there, it said, it doesn't get any better than this. That, that is a strange thing to say in a sad place. Why would you want to stay there when it says it doesn't get any better than this? Well, my goodness, I wanted it a lot better than that. I wanted to be happy and joyful. So it, it's not that I ever left the Lord, but... Uh, you sure realize that bars and that alcohol and that booze, they sure didn't have nothing, you know. <laughs> you went to college, you said, in Wyoming? Yeah, at Laramie, Wyoming, home of the Cowboys. And them drunks stood right up there at the rail uh, when they were playing the ball game, said, Go, Wyo! You know, drunk or a skunk. And I thought, <laughs> okay, you know, it didn't seem to be that fun. But we had a good time down there. Uh, got a degree in petroleum engineering and and uh had some good gospel churches there and went there you know and learned to walk with the god really because he helped me i wasn't as smart as all them other guys down there and i struggled i had to work hard to go through school late nights i studied all the time it was it was a hard thing to do but i made it and then you came back to north dakota and then you went to work in the oil patch yep oil field hand born and raised in the patch and uh, just just uh, started uh, searching for my place with God, you know, and um, and uh, yep, came right back to the patch, yep. And then that's when this pastor—I don't know if he was trying to keep me busy or what, because I was always trying to help him, and it didn't always do so good. But uh, he sent me to the jail. That uh, pastor did, yep. And that was 1988, about three years after I got out of school. And so how did you become known as a preacher in the patch? That is a, quite a neat story. Oh, tell uh, us that one. Yeah, I was uh, going to preach at this uh, church down in Watford City. The, uh, we were preaching down there. And uh, this lady went out to try to um, uh, get people, like oil field workers, to come hear me because I was on radio. She was trying to get people to come and listen to me at the church. And, and she was real event, event, uh, evangelist, really trying to gather in the, the people to come come uh, see her. I, I see me preach, I hear me preach. And she, and she was kind of got disgusted at these oil field hands and said, listen, he's your preacher. He's your preacher from the patch. <laughs> and I, that's really good, lady. And then I was a preacher. And then the other people, and then my uh, line, she, she, they would say, well, what are you, a preacher in the corn patch? Or are you a 
pumpkin patch preacher or prairie. <laughs> what are you? I said, I'm a preacher from the oil patch. Uh, oil. No, I'm a preacher in the patch. Oil patch, that is. And so that's where we got our, our slogan. Oh, that's that's, that that's where you got your yeah. signature uh, intro yeah. to your your radio program. Yep, yeah. yeah. Crank it up. Now, how does that go again? Crank well, it up. Well, Jeff Nelson, you know Jeff, right? Yes. You know Jeff quite well. I was having trouble saying volume. Uh, cr uh, turn up your volume. It, you know, volume doesn't flow really good. He goes, well, forget volume. Just say, crank it up. And <laughs> that's stuck now. Crank it up for 90 seconds with a preacher in the patch. Oil patch, that is. I'll never forget the time I met this radio lady. Her name was D, you know, and then tell a story. <laughs> and then you tell a story. And that yeah. is, it's 90 seconds. You tell a yeah. story. And, you know, Ron, why is it that you think that a story just draws folks in to listen? And then you you kind of you you tell the story, yeah. and then you have drawn the the yeah. listener in, and yeah. then what? Well, I tell you what, the Lutherans really taught me this. I used to I preached at a lot of Lutheran churches over the year, and just loved them people. But uh, they always had that children's sermon first. Yes. Yep. Okay, yep. that teaches you volume. Who watches the children's church? Uh, I mean, the children's message when the pastor's up there with the children. The adults. All of them. All of them. <laughs> They're listening, too. Everybody yeah. listens. Yeah. And I thought, that is worth a million dollars. Yeah. And then, so what I do, you know, when we're preaching, I try to animate a little bit. And today, I, I used my, you know, just a little bit of a different twist, you know, and, and come up with something so that, it's different, you know, like them Lutherans taught me. And, uh, and so that's, you know, you kind of develop your style from how, what you get into, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. something to be said about the Lutherans. They know their Bible. They know the scriptures. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> they teach them every time. They and sure so they... anyway, they would always have a story, some kind of a little story, uh, you know, at those, uh, those services, you know, where the pastor would have a story. And I looked. I studied those crowds and they were watching. So I said, I'm going to try to adapt that to my life right there. So I thank the Lutherans for helping me. <laughs> Ron, you, uh, I'm putting up on the screen, you have to the cross ministries. Yeah. Your address there is uh, showing Box 2020. Yep. Yeah. Williston. And, and something that you've said, or, or maybe I saw it on your website. If God mm. is our partner, we mm. had better think big. We better think big. Tell boy. me about we're, that. We're what, gonna... what, are you, what are you saying there? Well, you know, he is big and, and, and you might as well shoot high because he's high. And, and uh, I, I mean, I did, I knew I wanted to preach on radio, and I felt the Lord tell me to preach on radio. And I'm like, well, how do I do that and all this? And, and uh, but uh, I let it slide for a couple weeks. And I felt the Lord say, listen, buddy, if you're not going to do this, I'm going to get somebody else to do this. And so I <clears throat> gulped and went down to your guys' radio station at 660 Keys. And I went in there and says, I want to preach a half hour. They said, so. <laughs> it's a big deal. And I said, well, well, what do you mean? I Can't I preach half hour? And they said, no, no. I said, well, I'd like to preach 15 minutes then. They said, so? We don't care. <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, well, how long will you let me preach? And they said, we'll let you preach 90 seconds and you got to pay for it. <laughs> and so, so then I thought, well, they let me. And then I just went on two or three of your guys' stations. And then I thought, well, this is working. Well, why don't we just, and I really felt, honest to, honest to God, I, don't know, I can't remember I dreamt it or what, but I had this thing in my head that, I don't know, you could call it a vision, I guess, if you want to, I don't know. But I could just see this starting up here and kind of blazing right down through the middle of the country. And then it kind of spreading out to the sides. And uh, we haven't blazed all the way through the middle but we're down through Wyoming and, you know, we have some, you know, California out there and, you know, and so maybe the Lord's going to really launch us here soon, you know, and put on more stations. Uh, we added Douglas, Wyoming here recently. And uh, so that's going right the way the, the, 
the you know the theory i mean the, the vision is you know your first vision yes yeah. well mm -hmm. folks my my guest today on just say it is ron evett known as a preacher in the patch and uh, his show has been airing his radio program has been airing since 1997 mm -hmm. his weekly radio program it's heard yep. Throughout Western North Dakota, Eastern Montana, Wyoming, and California, <laughs> probably up there in Canada and Saskatchewan as well. Mm -hmm. And it bit. just is uh, a, such a, a great program. And Ron, we've talked about uh, your your radio program, your jail ministry. Uh, anything else that you would want the folks to know today yes. about your ministry, to the yeah. Cross Ministries? Well, I'll tell you right now, have lots of children. Uh, my children, and I'll stop from getting all watery-eyed. Watery They're looking at me like, Dad, are you crazy? Uh, my kids have been, they've really made it for me, actually. The Lord sent them. I mean, Riley does the radio broadcast, right? Okay, Riley does the radio. He, he puts it on. Awesome. Dixie over here has been a manager. She's handled our books and 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 set this up. I didn't know which button to press. I had no idea that you get a cord and plug it in here. <laughs> Dixie does it all. And then uh, and then uh, so she's amazing. And it just she'll take me up uh, somebody's birthday and says, Dad, it's it's your sister's birthday. I mean, manages. I'm like, say I love you to my sister and get all the credit, you know. And so my kids are <laughs> are are the foundation of it all. And then, um, um, and then uh, Reinhard, he is uh, uh, mechanical brains, business, uh, mechanical genius, you know, and uh, just good with business. Okay, so I got him. We he's helped me immensely. And then RW, <laughs> RW, if it's forty below and we got a job, we'll get her, Dad. You know, and uh, he, he just brawn, physically strong, a man of Samson in this day and age. And then we got, uh, uh, which other ones I got, kids? I got Dixie. Oh, I know this is Dixie, Daisy over there. <laughs> They're like telling me I got one more. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> Daisy is love. She gives me the hugs. <laughs> she gives me, uh, <laughs> she's, she's the love child. They all love me. They all show love. I mean, it's just that Daisy gives me hugs probably more than yes. I don't know. She's around more though, so maybe that's why. And uh, uh, but otherwise, they all do something. So if you're going to have a ministry and you're going to have a good life, be sure you have a lot of children. That's a, that's the key. Children are a heritage of the Lord. You know? Yes, they are a blessing. I know, mm -hmm. Ron, and grandchildren too. Yeah, such a blessing. And it right. sounds like that they share your vision. Oh, they they are so good to me. I, I just they do. R W and Daisy, we're down we're down in the tent meeting. Vision. Yeah, they're they're the band, and Riley's in the band too sometimes. And but uh, yeah, they really are. They've really been sent straight from God to do this. Yeah. Ron, it has been a pleasure to have you yeah. on the program today. This is called Just Say It, and on yeah. each program, I invite my guest to share whatever might be on on their heart. So I invite you to just say it. Yeah, and I wanted to just say one thing to that person listening by this thing. Not to be discouraged because then you really focus on the Lord God Almighty and do the gift that God has given you. God's given you a gift. And if you're living through life and not doing what God has given you to do, the joy that really makes you uh, uh, pleased inside, that inside thing, then you're going to miss it. And, and uh, people go to work all their lives and never uh, do what they really want to do. And I'm telling you to do it. But there's a key thing that you have to know. And that is the Bible says, and people just blow these verses off, but there's a key in here that they really need. And the Bible says to trust in the Lord and do good. So you'll dwell in the land and verily will you be fed. But here comes the big thing, the big, huge thing. The Bible says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of their heart. People eyes up at that county jail there today and the place is full of people that try to get the desires of their heart themselves and try to bypass God's plan. And you'll miss it all. You'll miss it all unless you wait for God to give it you the desires of your heart. 
And you need to commit to him and rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And he's going to bring it around for you. He's going to bring you around. Thank you. Ron Evett, it's been a pleasure to have you on Just you. Say It on this Sunday afternoon. I, I know you're a busy uh, preacher you. in the patch. You you just had the jail ministry, and then yep. later on you've got your Facebook Live. So thank you yep. for fitting this program into your busy schedule, Ron. God bless you, Dee. You're amazing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. God bye bless bye. everyone. Yep, bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining this edition and tuning into this edition of Just Say It, whether you join live or you'll you'll listen later on the replay. It's been just wonderful for uh, to have your presence here with me today uh, on Just Say It. I'm Dee James. Goodbye for now. And I hope you'll join me next time for Just Say It. <laughs>